All right, Chair Schmidt, you may begin. Great, thank you. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Welcome to the November 22nd, 2021 City of Burlingame Planning Commission meeting. For all in attendance today, please note that this Planning Commission meeting is being held using Zoom webinar format. So you will see that the Planning Commissioners and staff are panelists. Please note that there are several ways to submit comments during this meeting. You may raise your hand in Zoom by clicking on the raise hand button located at the bottom of your screen. Members of the public who are participating in the Zoom webinar by phone can dial star nine to raise a hand. You may also send your comments by email to publiccomment at burlingame.org. Staff will be monitoring emails submitted during the meeting, which will be read at the appropriate time. The length of the email comment should be commensurate with the three minutes customarily allowed for verbal comments. If you're an applicant or an applicant's representative, I will ask you to raise your hand when the agenda item is up for discussion so that we may be prepared for you to speak at the appropriate time. We ask that you also turn on your video at that time so that we can have a more clear communication simulating the experience we would have if we were meeting in person. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube and will be uploaded to the city's website after the meeting. Uh, item number two, roll call. The record should note that all members of the, of the commission are present this evening. Item number three, approval of minutes. Uh, we have minutes from our October 25th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any comments, changes, or discussions regarding the meeting minutes? Commissioner Taranis. Uh No, Mr. Chair, I sent in a few uh, corrections um, previously, and I saw in the updated draft that we received um, that those have been incorporated. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for October 25th, 2021 as amended. I have, I have one correction actually. Commissioner Gall. Yeah, on, um, I had sent in a correction about the vote on item, um, what is it, eight? Uh, 8B, 8D, 567 Airport Boulevard about the vote. Um, on page nine, uh, it looks like the motion is, there were two motions and it looks like the, the, the same motion. In fact, the first motion was for the adoption of the mitigated neg declaration. And it says that it's uh, for the commercial design review and conditional use permits for floor area ratio and building height, which is the same motion as the second motion that's made. So we, uh, I believe the first motion is for the CEQA um, approval and we've corrected that to show you as, as a no vote on that. And okay. then the second motion was for the entitlements only, so. Okay, I didn't, that looked like it's the same motion in the copy that I've got, but as long as you guys are comfortable with it, I'm okay. We'll, we'll take another look at it just to make sure it's correct, but I believe we fixed it, so thank you. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Toronto's to approve the minutes with the corrections noted. Do we have a second? I'll second, I'll second that. I'm going to give it to Sandy. Uh, Commissioner, a motion by Commissioner Toronto's and a second by Commissioner Camarado. Um, and do, and uh, we need to vote? Yes, we'll take a vote on that. Okay. Commissioner Camarado? Aye. Commissioner Gall? Aye. Commissioner Larios? Aye. Commissioner Tironis? Aye. Commissioner Say? Aye. Vice Chair Loftus? Aye. Chair Schmidt? Aye. Motion carries 7000. Okay, moving on to the agenda, uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes tonight? Uh, there are no changes from staff. Great. Uh, do we have any recusals this evening? Uh, yes, I will be recusing from the last three, 831 Acacia, uh, since I sold that property to um, 1230, uh, since I have a property within 500 feet of that property. Six Cypress. I also have a property 500 feet of that property. 
Okay, great. Okay, then moving on to item number five, public comments. Members of the public may speak about any item that is not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for a future planning commission agenda may do so during the public comment period. The Ralph Brown Act, the state local agency open meeting law prohibits the planning commission from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. A timer will sound at the end of the time. I may adjust the time in the light in light of the number of anticipated speakers. Please speak clearly into the microphone. Do we have any members of the public who wish to speak on any item that is not on our agenda? Uh, let's see if we have any participants. Okay, not seeing any hands, then I will move on to the next item. Uh, Chair Schmade, we also just wanted to point out there are no public comments received either for- Perfect general items. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, item number six, study items. We do not have any on the agenda this evening. So moving on to item number seven, consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine. They are acted on simultaneously unless separate discussion and or action is requested by the applicant, a member of the public, or a commissioner prior to the time the commission votes on the motion to adopt. Would any member of the public or the applicant like to pull any of these or this item uh, for discussion? Okay, not seeing anybody in the public, not seeing any of us. Okay, then uh, can I get a motion for the consent calendar? Mr. Chair, I, I move that we approve the consent calendar. Second. Great, motion by Vice Chair Loftus and a second by Commissioner Tronis. Any further discussion? Okay, let's vote. Commissioner Camarado. Aye. Commissioner Gall. Aye. Commissioner Larios. Aye. Commissioner Tronis. Aye. Commissioner Say. Aye. Vice Chair Loftus. Aye. Chair Schmid. Aye. Motion carries seven zero zero zero. An action by the Planning Commission is appealable to the City Council within 10 days of the Planning Commission's action. If the Planning Commission's action has not been appealed or called up for review by the City Council by 5 p.m. on the 10th day, the action becomes final. In order to be effective, appeals must be in writing and must be accompanied by an appeal fee of $708, which includes noticing costs. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to item number eight. First up is 1548 Westmore Road. If you're the applicant or the applicant's representative, please raise your hand so that we may be prepared for you to speak at the appropriate time. If possible, we ask that you also turn on your video at that time. Were any commercial commissioners not able to visit the project site or do any commissioners wish to note any ex parte communications regarding this project? Okay, seeing none. Then let the record note that all commissioners present have visited the project site. Can we hear a staff report, please? Yes, this is an application for a design review for a first and second story addition to an existing single family dwelling and new detached garage at 1548 Westmore Road, zoned R1. The existing one story house with an attached garage contains 1,562 square feet of floor area. The proposed project includes the first floor addition at the rear of the house and a new second floor uh, totaling 1,194 square feet. The existing attached garage and right side of the house would be demolished to make room for a new driveway that leads to a new detached garage at the right uh, rear side of the lot. With the proposed project, the floor area would increase to 3,071 square feet or 3,085 square feet as the maximum allowed. The number of potential bedrooms would increase from three to four with this project. Two parking spaces, one of which must be covered, are required on site. The new detached garage would provide one covered parking space and one uncovered space would be provided in the driveway. At the Planning Commission Design Review Study Meeting on October 25th, the Commission had several concerns and suggestions regarding the project. 
Uh, the applicant submitted a response letter dated November 9th and revised plans date stamp November 10th to address uh, your concerns and suggestions for the project. Suggested findings for design review are found on page three of the staff report. And this concludes uh, my summary of the staff report. I see that the applicant is also available. Do you have any questions for staff? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, uh, then why don't we go ahead and open up the public hearing. Would the applicant please come forward and state your name and anything else you'd like to add about your project? Yes, uh, this is Tony Pontaleoni with CODIS Pontaleoni Architects. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. I push the right buttons and thank you. Um, I just like to say that first off, um, you asked us to coordinate uh, on the right side of a property line, a meeting with the neighbor at 1544 Westmore Avenue to discuss the removal of the existing fence and the construction of the new garage along the rear of the property. Um, the project sponsors have tried three times, uh, have gone to visit the, the neighbor three times. Uh, no one's been home. Uh, they left a note to have them call when they can. And as of today, we have not received a phone call back. Um, one of the concerns was the, um, the height of our plate heights. Uh, on the ground floor, we lowered our plate height from nine foot six to nine foot. And on the second floor, from nine foot to eight, eight foot, overall reducing the overall height of the building 18 inches. Um, you also asked us to remove the, uh, or reduce the size of the fascia boards. Um, we did um, remove them from two by 12s down to two by sixes. Uh, that was taken care of. Uh, also at the entry, there was a uh, trellis over the entry arch. Uh, and you asked for us to consider breaking up the facade a little bit there. I don't know if you could put the front elevation, please. Yes, the upper one is the, uh, the proposed new elevation. We added a bay window, we removed the trellis, we lowered the arch uh, about a foot, and then we added uh, the bay window above the arch, centered over the arch and the windows in the living room. Um, lastly, uh, there were some large plain areas that um, you asked us to see if we can modify and articulate a little more. Uh, this is the uh, west elevation where uh, I do have a before and after. Uh, that would be better if we could show that. There we go. Perfect. So before is below the previous presentation and now the proposed presentation where we set back the stairwell, which is in the middle of the drawing in the upper uh, elevation. Um, we revised the roof a little bit more. And then also we added a dormer uh, to the rear bedroom. Uh, and a little pop out there. And then if you go to the east elevation, uh, again, uh, we added we uh, added a dormer and popped out a little bit of a, articulated the bay a little bit more uh, on that side as well. So those are the changes we're proposing and we hope you vote in favor of the project. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see if there's anyone else in the public that wishes to comment. Uh, if there's anybody that wishes to comment, raise your hand, please. Okay, seeing none, then we'll go ahead and go back to the commissioners. Uh, any comments? Who would like to be first? Vice Chair Loftus. Yeah, I'll start. I think that the, the project's improved quite a bit, actually. The, reducing the verticality of the, uh, of the project helped a lot, so we appreciate you addressing that. I think the, the facades are feeling much more, uh, much less plain and much more articulated. So I, I, think these are, I think these are pretty good changes. I wasn't sure at first about the vertical um, the, the vertical siding that's that was 
proposed, but I, it's growing on me the more I look at it. Uh, I think it's not, uh, I think it's nice. I think it, it helps to distinguish those elements uh, well. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the changes personally. Okay, others, By, uh, Commissioner Toronto's. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner Loftus. I, I think that the changes are for the better. Uh, the massing has been reduced. The elevations are more articulated as the architect had explained. So I think the project is approvable at this point. Okay, uh, Commissioner Camarado. Um, yeah, I first wanted to say the uh, meeting when this first came, but I did review the meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they did some nice changes with my fellow commissioners. I could see approving this project. Great, thank you. Commissioner Gall? Yeah, um, I, I do like most of the changes, although I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Maybe, Tony, you could help me with the, the bay on the front of the house. Um, I don't know. I know I, I was reading back in the comments where it asked about potentially a bay there. I'm just not sure if that's exactly the type of bay that fits the front of the house. Could you help me walk me through that or the thought on that bay? Sure, no, we're bringing uh, Mr. Pantaleone back in as a panelist. So just give us a second here. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yes. Um, well, uh, we uh, maybe I took the uh, suggestion a little too literally. I, um, this is the master bathroom, uh, and it's, that's the master shower, actually, where we popped out um, on the front elevation, and that's why the windows are so high. If you go to the, uh, if you go to the, if you could go to the uh, second floor plan, that would be fantastic. Uh, we don't have the floor plans for oh, privacy concerns, plans. so yeah, we just have the elevations. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, um, that's what we're, that's uh, what we're doing now. Uh, you know, I, I could. Uh, I'm just thinking if there might be something else that I can do to to uh, make it a little. You know, I just I sort of just followed your one of the commissioner's suggestions there, so. Yeah, I just, I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'd like to hear from the other commissioners, but, but I, for one, feel that that element, I mean, everything else I think looks pretty good, but I, that element just looks like it's kind of tacked on. It, it really looks mm -hmm. like it doesn't belong on the front of the house, but I'll, um, I'll defer that question to some of the architects on the commission, maybe. Okay. okay. Uh, Commissioner Say. Okay. Um, yes, um, thank you. I, um, I, I have a, I have that same thought as um, Commissioner Gall, um, especially after I know that it's a shower projection too. I can't help but feel like um, that it's <laughs> it could fall down. <laughs> I'm just having this imagination. Um, it's a three foot projection forward, which is a fairly deep um, bay projection right over the entrance at uh, the front door. Um, and I think also the vertical siding tends to elongate it, makes it feel extra tall. Um, so I think it's, it's about the, the depth of the projection um, and the overall height of it that seems heavy. And it gives the appearance like it could fall off the house and um, you know, land on somebody coming into the, um, the front entry. It's putting a little tension on the arc, uh, the arch just below, in, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if there was an ability to change it a little where it could be a bench over the shower in that area. So it would yeah. be a little higher um, bay um, projection yep. and shallower, you know, and still have the shower be in, in that location. I know you did rework the floor plan to, um, to produce this bay window, but those are my thoughts on it. But uh, otherwise I agree on the other elevations. Um, and we appreciate your, um, you addressing the comments that were brought up at the last meeting. I don't know if you hear me, but I can, I can definitely uh, reduce the overall height of it. I can definitely uh, reduce the depth of it as well. And, um, 
Uh, yeah, I think, again, I apologize. I probably just went a little too literal with what was <laughs> said by one of the commissioners a while ago at the last meeting, and I could definitely make some adjustments to that to reduce the size of it as well. So um, for me, yeah, I'm struggling with it as well, but I'm kind of, I'm struggling with the fact that the doors are on the, the front doors look like they're on the bedroom and, uh, and the entry is not really looking like an entry for me. Um, and then with the pop out that just kind of made it accentuated it even more. Um, so I think that there's some room on the pop out there to, to delineate that a little bit better. I think a lot of the other pop outs work pretty well. Um, and I think that that was better. Um, I, I had a question on, uh, I think it's the garage where there's a note to do hardy board siding. Um, is there, have you guys figured out how you're going to trim the corners? Are you going to miter them? And are you going to then do hardy board on the rest of it or just on the garage? No, it's on the whole house. Okay. Okay. And we have a detail for the corner. We don't miter it because it's almost impossible to miter. Uh, and I don't like those uh, pre-made corners that they provide you with. So we do, we have a, a detail. It's a small aluminum, a fry riglet, uh, aluminum X type of piece where mm -hmm. both ends come together. And then we paint it the same color as the siding and it's hardly noticeable. We find okay. that detail to be much more acceptable than uh, the pre-made corners. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Commissioner Tronis? Yeah, thank you. Well, um, since I'm the one that, that suggested a bay on that front facade, I'm gonna take a stab at making a motion here to move the project forward and give the architect uh, the benefit of, of moving forward and, and working on that. So Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the project um, with just an added condition that the architect can rework that bay to make it shorter and make the projection less and that that could be reviewed by staff. If staff feels it needs to be an FYI, I don't think it, it I don't think we should put a condition that it has to come back as an FYI. I think staff can review that. So that's my motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, motion by Commissioner Tronis and a second by Commissioner Say. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, then let's go ahead and vote. Commissioner Camarado. Aye. Commissioner Gall. Aye. Commissioner Larios. Aye. Commissioner Tironis. Aye. Commissioner Say. Aye. Vice Chair Loftus. Aye. Chair Schmidt. Aye. Motion carries 7000. An action by the Planning Commission is appealable to the City Council within 10 days of the Planning Commission's action. If the Planning Commission's action has not been appealed or called up for review by the City Council by 5 p.m. on the 10th day, the action becomes final. In order to be effective, appeals must be in writing and must be accompanied by an appeal fee of $708, which includes noticing costs. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to item... 8B261 California Drive. If you're the applicant or the applicant's representative, please raise your hand so that we may be prepared for you to speak at the appropriate time. If possible, we ask that you also turn on your video at that time. Were any commissioners not able to visit the project site or do any commissioners wish to note any ex parte communications regarding this project? Okay, seeing none, let the record note that all commissioners present have visited the project site. Can we hear a staff report, please? Sure, this is an application for a conditional use permit for a food establishment in an existing commercial building at 261 California Drive, zoned HMU. Uh, the proposed business back house is a bakery and cafe with customer seating. The tenant space is currently occupied by Base Camp Fitness who will be relocating next door to 251 California Drive. And a conditional use permit for that business was approved in March of this year. Backhouse is a family owned and operated bakery that would sell 
artisan breads, as well as pastries, coffee, and espresso drinks. Back House is currently located in downtown San Mateo. This would be their second location. The existing commercial building measures a little over 5,000 square feet in area, and it uh, contains a ground floor and a second floor that is open to the ground floor. The proposed project includes modifying both floors, resulting in a net increase of 24 square feet. Currently, the ground floor is recessed from the front facade by approximately 15 feet. The proposed project includes bumping out the ground floor space towards the street, but behind the front facade to provide a larger seating area for the bakery cafe. The ground floor would include new aluminum frame entry doors, as well as a six panel folding door in the center, which would provide a public interface between the seating area and the block face. The existing second floor would be reconfigured and a net decrease of approximately 240 square feet. The second floor would also include a seating area for the bakery and cafe towards the front with the rear containing mechanical and baking equipment, storage, a bathroom, and an employee break room. The proposed food establishment would approximately have 1,000 square feet of uh, indoor customer seating. Uh, the exterior changes proposed apply to only 17.5% of the front facade. Um, so therefore, this project is not subject to commercial design review. Uh, retail, personal service, and food establishment uses located on the first floor or on the ground floor of the, uh, within the parking sector of the downtown area are exempt from vehicle parking requirements. Uh, the subject property is located within the parking sector and the existing mezzanine is actually decreasing in square footage. Uh, therefore, no additional offsite parking is required for this proposed business. Suggested findings for the conditional use permit are found on page three of this staff report. This concludes a summary of the proposed application. I'd be happy to take questions of staff, um, but the applicant is also available. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions for staff at this time? Okay, seeing none, then oh, let's go ahead and open up the public hearing. And will the applicant uh, please come forward, state your name and what, anything you'd like about your project. Okay, hi, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, commissioners. My name is Michael Nilmeyer. We are the architects for the project and um, I'll give a brief presentation. Uh, and then Robert Moser will, will, will uh, give, tell them, tell you a little bit about themselves as proprietors of the business. So basically, the, the, this is an existing building at 261 California uh, Drive. It, it, right now it is Base Camp uh, Fitness Center. It has ground floor exercise area. The entry is recessed between 15 and 20 feet. And there's, that's, over the years, if, if the staff has called it a mezzanine, it's technically a second floor, um, but the mezzanine is grandfathered in with respect to area and parking. Uh, we are decreasing the size of the mezzanine area. We're filling in part and then taking away from some other parts to open up the, the uh, space to, to provide some light to the ground floor areas. And uh, it's going to be a bakery with baking equipment, um, uh, some sales area toward the front, and then sit some seating and some seating upstairs, as well as an office area and uh, an employee break area. Uh, this particular location, the uh, back house has a location on Third Avenue in San Mateo. They have a really, really great product line of, of artisan breads and pastries. Uh, this particular facility will have a mill room where they will have a mill where they'll be able to uh, grind different varieties of flour, which is something they can't do right now. They get deliveries of about two pallets of flour once a week. Currently in their existing location, they haul the flour upstairs uh, by hand with 50 pound bags. And so it's, to, in my mind, it's a young person's job, but not for me. Uh, the thought was to do this possibly at this location, but we have made uh, allowances for a um, product lift, a pallet lift, so we can get bags of flour upstairs and, and grain so they can dump it into a hopper to go down into the mill room when they make the flour. Uh, because the second floor mezzanine uh, is less than 3,000 square feet, we're technically exempt from full accessibility. However, we are providing a, uh, 
a lift to provide some accessibility to the uh, second floor mezzanine area. Uh, and that allows us to have the office on the second floor and the employee break room on the second floor as well. We want to bring forward the existing facade, move it closer to the street to provide an entry and exit, two entries and exits, so to speak. And then uh, the, um, the panoramic door system where on nice days that they can be opened up and they can have uh, when they get open and, and get um, uh, the necessary permits, they can get sidewalk seating. The sidewalk there is rather large, it's 16 feet wide. All deliveries will be, for the most part will come through Hatch Lane at the rear uh, as, as most of the businesses do there as well as uh, trash and utilities with the exception of water, which comes from the, the street. We are uh, saw cutting two window areas on the rear area, on, on rear elevation of Hatch Lane to provide some light upstairs. We're adding new skylights as well to open up the space and make it more light. Uh, right now it's pretty dark. And then um, we would like to do a little work on the existing parapet facade on California. It's in need of some repair as there's a lot of dry rot. And we feel it, the existing configuration is pretty top heavy uh, and, and cumbersome. I, we'd like to simplify that and make it a little more straightforward. The, the, there is no on-site parking. There is an existing public parking lot adjacent and street parking as well. And I think with that, uh, Robert, uh, if, if you would like to raise your hand and join in and tell the commission about uh, yourself and, and uh, your products, I think that would be good. And then I'll conclude my and open up to questions. After, oh, there they are. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Anna Moser. This is my husband, Robert, and we are the proprietors of Backhouse. Um, as Michael Neumeyer already mentioned, um, we're a small family owned business. Um, started, uh, we actually live pretty much on the almost on the border of San Mateo and Burlingame. So we have always very much focused on our local community and customers here. Um, started out of our home kitchen and um, then very quickly moved to a commercial kitchen and the uh, um, Burlingame Fresh Market on Sundays in Burlingame was actually the first farmer's market where we were selling to a larger public. So we're very much connected with the community in Burlingame, get a lot of customers from Burlingame at our San Mateo location right now. And um, yeah, we're very excited to get the second location to just be more of a presence in Burlingame. We have always been an impact driven business. So we, um, yeah, our goal has always been to just stay as local as possible, but provide, um, have, yeah, have the most impact on our customers and provide the best experience to our local community. Um, from the products that we make um, to um, offering classes and just sharing our, um, our love for the craft and for baking and for local um, and organic produce that we use in our products. So with, with that, I guess, are there any questions for either of us? Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicants? Okay, I do. Um, just looking, and it's not to be nitpicky, I'm just, uh, it's what I do during the day. Uh, but uh, looking at the existing ground floor demo plan, I'm noticing a bit of structural elements that I'm not seeing transfer through to the new plan, which could the impacts? Yep. <laughs> well, um, here, here's the situation. <laughs> so either they're disappearing or... No, no, we, we, um, we, we cannot open the existing ceiling on the ground floor to, to figure out some of the framing areas because uh, base camp is still in the facility and Got we it. keep poking holes in the ceiling. We have a rough idea what some of the... Uh, uh, existing floor framing is for the second floor. Uh, we are removing some columns and we have ways that we can transfer those loads and with larger beams carrying down other columns. But in the entry area, uh, we just don't know what that floor framing is. And a lot of it's buried in, in existing elements. And 
so it, it's one of those situations where when uh, when Basecamp does finally move out, which I think is going to be the beginning of the year, we can do some experimental uh, or in, inquiry as far as poking some holes here and there so we can uh, find out how we're going to transfer some of the loads. And, and uh, it, it's basically the area where, yeah, we, have, we, do, we just have some, some homework to do yet. Yeah, you know we can Fair do. Enough. There, there's uh, believe it or not, there's a, there's an incredible crawl space below this this <laughs> existing ground floor. It ranges from four feet to thirty inches high, and it's um, it's uh, it could use a good cleaning, but it, it's it's accessible. And there's been a lot of work done there in the past for different things. There's a lot of uh, footings and, and the like down there, but uh, we have area to work, and, and we know we have to transfer the loads. But yes, it, it, some of that is just kind of up in the air. Uh, yeah. the, the, no, uh, impact, no impact at the moment, but it it's, no. could be an impact to you guys downstream. Well, we, we, we've, we've always been looking uh, toward the layout in the back of our mind, where could we place our columns and how can we, how can we span a beam from here to here to carry some of the existing mezzanine loads and the like. And um, so it, it's, it's always in the back of our minds, but the problem is this is one of the few situations where we can't get access and we, don't have any reference drawings of anything as far as that floor framing. So uh, we know we can do it. It's just a matter of how we're going to accomplish that with the least interference possible. Fair enough. Uh, I will I will make a comment to the existing roof structure are old fashioned wood trusses that span from sidewall to sidewall. So those loads go down on the two exterior walls. So mm -hmm. it's just the floor load that we need to uh, concern ourselves with. Okay. Vice Chair Loftus. Yeah, before we go down any rabbit holes, the only thing in front of us tonight is conditional use permit. So um, I, this seems very, very straightforward to me. Yep, fair enough. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, let me see if there's anyone in the public. Uh, Ms. Faff. Hi, um, I just, I'm very excited about this. Whoops, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, uh, we're, we were um, Bachhaus, early Bachhaus fans, and um, we're very excited to hear you're coming. And um, I just wanted to reiterate that um, the building that you're in, that you're going to be in, or we hopefully, um, is a Berlin Games earliest theater from 1912, 1913. And I think the reason it has such a um, substantial basement area and such is because it was sort of built on a tilt. And um, so it has a nice long history. It's been many things, um, bars and all kinds of stuff. So um, it's a great history that you're um, entering into. So thank you. Okay, um, and then uh, we have another hand up in the air, uh, Mr. Carp. Burlington Avenue. Um, thank you for a number of blue cards on this project. So I own a building on the same block and a couple others in the area. I'm 100% in favor of this addition to California Drive. I'm also representing the landlord, um, which I also represented a restaurant next door at 251. And I can tell you, we had a number of other people that we could have rented it to that would have brought back the memories of blush or something not as well. So I just think this is a great addition for this part of California Drive in our community. So hopefully we'll have a uh, back house in our community soon. Those are my comments. Thank you. Okay, with that, then do we have any um, messages? Ruben? Let me check. Uh, no, no emails through public comment email. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. Come back to the commissioners. Uh, comments or motions? 
Vice Chair Loftus? Well, I'll say that this is a really exciting project as far as I'm concerned. It feels like the perfect use for that building. Um, so I, for one, um, I'd, I'd make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit for this project. I'll second that motion. Go okay. So we got a we got a motion and a second, and we have a comment by Commissioner Say. Oh, I wanted to say exactly the same. I'm so excited. I hope that Backhouse can start building tomorrow um, <laughs> as a frequent visitor of the San Mateo shop. Um, so I wanted to second the motion, but I think someone beat me to it. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion by Vice Chair Loftus. I thought I heard Commissioner Camarado speak up loudest. Maybe. Um, I'll take third. <laughs> I was gonna say it was, it was tough, but anyway, moving on. Uh, so we have a we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other comments? Great. Moving on. Uh, can we have a vote? Commissioner Camarado. Aye. Commissioner Gall. Aye. Commissioner Larios. Aye. Commissioner Taranis. Aye. Commissioner Say. Aye. Vice Chair Loftus. Aye. Chair Schmidt. Aye. Motion carries 7000. An action by the Planning Commission is appealable to the City Council within 10 days of the Planning Commission's action. If the Planning Commission's action has not been appealed or called up for review by the City Council by 5 p.m. on the 10th day, the action becomes final. In order to be effective, appeals must be in writing and must be accompanied by an appeal fee of $708, which includes noticing costs. Congratulations. We all want you to be here soon. Moving on uh, to item number 9A, design review study for 1215 Vancouver Avenue. If you are the applicant or the applicant's representative, please raise your hand so that we may be prepared for you to speak at the appropriate time. If possible, we ask that you also turn on your video at that time. Were any commissioners not able to visit the project site or do any commissioners wish to note any ex parte communications regarding the project? Commissioner Say. Uh, yes, I um, met with the property owner, um, Whitney, and um, got to take a look at the property and get access to it um, directly. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Let the record note that all commissioners present have visited the project site. Can we hear a staff report, please? Yes, this is an application for design review for a first and second story addition to an existing single family dwelling at 1215 Vancouver Avenue, zoned R1. The subject site is a flag lot with the address and driveway frontage on Vancouver Avenue. By zoning code definition, Vancouver Avenue is the front of the lot. The entry to the house faces what is considered the rear frontage, which abuts Armsby Avenue in the town of Hillsborough. The property is entirely within the boundaries of the city of Burlingame. The subject property contains an existing two and a half story main dwelling, a detached garage and a pool. The driveway from Vancouver Avenue runs along the left side of the property to the detached garage at the rear left side of the lot. The garage doors face Armsby Avenue and the uncovered parking spaces are located between the garage doors and Armsby Avenue. Uh, however, there is um, uh, no vehicular access to the property from Armsby Avenue. The existing house and garage totals 5,006 square feet in floor area. The applicant is proposing a 651 square foot first floor addition and a 465 square foot second story uncovered deck addition facing the yard and pool. With the proposed project, the total floor area would be 5,657 square feet, where 9,596 square feet is the maximum allowed. However, staff would note that the zoning code establishes a maximum house size of 8,000 square feet, uh, regardless of this lot size. Uh, the only request before you this evening is design review. Uh, that concludes my summary of the staff report. Uh, and I'd be happy to take questions of staff if you have any. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions at this time? Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing. 
Uh, would the applicant please come forward and state your name and anything else you'd like to add about your project? Hi, uh, my name is Rebecca Amato. Um, I'm the owner of Amato Architecture and the architect on this project. Um, just wanted to add that uh, it's a beautiful historic house. Our design has reflected a lot of the original details. It, uh, the addition that we're proposing is all in the back of the property. Um, currently, there's not a really great access from the main house down to the yard and to the pool. And what we're proposing is a semi-open um, entertainment area that would be a, an improved connection between the house and the pool that would just allow the, the owners, Whitney and Dennis, to enjoy um, entertaining down at that level um, more. There's a small uh, room that we're adding that would be used primarily as an exercise room, occasionally a guest bedroom, but um, the deck above would uh, provide the owners views of the yard and just um, you know improved access for the property, and use of the property. I'm open to any questions you might have. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing no hands, then I'll go ahead to the public. Uh, is there anybody who wishes to speak on this project? Seeing no hands, then I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, are there any um, emails? None received. Okay, perfect. Then commissioners, uh, comments? Commissioner Toronto's. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think this project is, you know, while somewhat unique in its, its site planning and et cetera, with the flag lot and configuration, and, um, but it's, it's relatively straightforward in my mind. All that's being asked of us is design review. Um, you know, so I look closely at, the programming for the the deck that's sort of off of a, a raised floor um you know we tend to look closely at decks that are raised but in this case i think it really just looks out to it, itself looks out to its own property um it, it affords the the homeowner the opportunity to take better advantage of that second uh sort of second that raised floor i hesitate calling it a second floor but um that ground floor to take advantage of overlooking the yard and getting some better indoor outdoor space. Um, I think that the, the design and detailing of the, of the deck and that um, sort of under deck area with the, uh, the fire pit and the TV screen is gonna be a really nice addition to that yard. So I think it's a nice project and should move forward. Commissioner Say. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, having had an opportunity to take a look um, up close and at the backyard, uh, which is where the addition is proposed, um, exactly like um, Commissioner Chirona said, the basically the addition looks upon itself. Um, there are doesn't appear to have any issues blocking any potential views um, for any neighbors. Um, it's a, quite a private property. And, um, and I think it's a very nicely detailed and designed. Um, and I agree that this project should also move forward. Great, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Lampus. Yeah, it, it feels to me like a very commonsensical and very restrained project in a restrained in a good way. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion that we bring it back on, on the consent calendar actually. I'll second that motion. Great, uh, motion by Vice Chair Loftus and a second by Commissioner Say. Any further discussion? Nope, let's vote. Aye. Commissioner Camarado. Aye. Commissioner Gall. Aye. Commissioner Larios. Aye. Commissioner Taranis. Aye. Commissioner Say. Aye. Vice Chair Loftus. Aye. Chair Schmidt. Aye. Motion carries 700. Zero. Um, and that concludes uh, items number nine.
Uh, moving on to uh, agenda item number 10, commissioner's reports. Do we have any reports from the commissioners? Okay, seeing no movement, uh, then let's move on to director's reports. Sure, uh, the, let's see, I have one thing to share regarding the zoning code update. Uh, the city council at their last um, meeting, uh, the ordinance was introduced um, at that meeting. Uh, the council had no changes, so it is coming back on December 6th for adoption, and then it would go into effect on January 5th, I believe, 30, 30 days after that. So we are uh, at, almost at the finish line, ready to cross. So again, thank you for all your hard work on that, and we're uh, super excited to, to start using the new code. Um, there are three FYIs. Um, before you this evening. So if you have any concerns regarding any of these, please let us know. Um, and if you do, if you could possibly provide a quick summary of the some of the items that you're concerned with. Commissioner Tronis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a concern with both uh, the FYI for 1556 Cyprus. Um, I actually don't find any of the changes acceptable. It seems to be a stripped down version of what was previously approved. So I'd like to see that come back for a hearing. And for 1235 Paloma Avenue, I'd like that to come back for a hearing. My Generally, I, I, I don't have much of an objection to most of the changes. The one concern I do have that I think we should visit though is the removal of the outriggers and corbels that are proposed. So I'd like to see that one come back for, for a hearing also. Thank you. Vice Chair Loftus. I'll just second everything that uh, Commissioner Toronis said because I had concerns about both of the same projects. I, they feel like too many changes without revisiting them. Okay. Any Great. others? So we can schedule those to come back as regular action items and it sounds like 831 Acacia is, is good to go. And last but not least, uh, Commissioner Gall reminded me that um, December 13th is our last planning commission meeting of the year, and it is close to the holiday season. So start looking for your ugly sweater, ugly holiday sweaters. Um, we will all be wearing them. I will be looking for one as well. So I'll let, <laughs> I'll let Kevin know too. Um, but let's see, there is a week, an extra week in between meetings. And... That's all I had. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and I don't know, Chair Schmidt, do you want to close it out? I took a little longer than we thought, but still a good meeting. <laughs> Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everyone. everyone. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, Happy Thanksgiving, Happy everybody. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Good night, Thanksgiving. Good night, guys.